Hey everybody, welcome to today's live stream. Hope you're all doing good today. So we're gonna be turning up a bottle stopper using one of those blanks that I salvaged from the, uh, the, the massacre blank, let's call it. So um, that's pretty much ready to go. I, I'm gonna go through the whole thing from start to finish. Um, actually, I don't have it chucked up, so I can't show you. Let me go get it real quick so you can see which one. Um, so it's one of those Red Malay burls painted it a little bit with some purple and some blurple and we're going to turn it into a bottle stopper so i'm excited because this will be the first time uh, turning the deep pour uh, so we'll see how that goes i don't really anticipate any problems it's pretty much like i, I think it's about the same hardness as alumilite clear slow set it's an epoxy versus urethane um, so it's probably going to kind of act and turn similar to most other epoxies, I'm guessing. So it should be pretty cool, though. I'm, I'm excited to make something else with our, uh, you know, with the salvage operation, basically. Um, and then we also have, so let's see, I don't know when my time is all, it, it's all a blur right now. So I don't know when we did these, but we did the, the crack filling. And uh, I know I mentioned that it was still a little bit soft a few days later. It is hard at this point. You can't dent it with your finger or anything. So these guys are totally, you know, ready for me to start working on them. I haven't done that yet. Can you guys see? Let me put this thing down here. There we go. I don't like that. So I'm excited because the Millennium Falcon, I think, is going to be salvaged. Uh, you know, it looks pretty good in there. Now, one thing to note about, you know, what we did, it looks a little bit kind of foggy on the top, and that's because there's uh, glow powder on the top of this thing. That's going to kind of make it look a little bit kind of milky like that, but we're going to cut the top surface off, and so you'll see some kind of cloudiness in there, but that's going to be the glow powder. So it should be kind of an interesting little piece, I think. I'm excited to kind of mess with that. And then this one just... Um, I can't demold. I mean, it's, I'm probably going to have to cut these things off at this point. Um, why is this thing bouncing so much? Um, so uh, I haven't really even tried to demold it. I was just kind of waiting for everything to harden up. So again, you know, if you're epoxy, if you're using an epoxy based resin and it's, you know, kind of soft on the top, kind of a little bit, you know, like you can dent it with your fingernail and stuff, just let it sit for a little bit longer and, and most likely it will, you know, harden up. Now, I think, uh, I think it was last, uh, <clears throat> last time we did the skateboard shavings. And so we got a couple of blanks here. I got to be honest, I, I don't know how awesome this is going to be. Kind of just looks like <laughs> muddy water a little bit in the clear. And this one turned out okay, but it all kind of sank to the bottom. I didn't, I should have waited. I, I kind of thought it was going to like stay floating. So by the time you, I don't know, I, I think it'll be okay, but... You know, we're going to be cutting out a lot of this stuff in the middle and, and it's not going to be in the rim. So, but I think it'll be decent. This one's not too bad. It just, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, if you don't wait on it, uh, you could have, you know, issues. It's not going to necessarily stay. Now, this one, on the other hand, turned out wicked. I think that this is really, you know, doing colors. Um, like, so this was just, uh, I think we just did, I think it was just white dye, totally. Um, and so, I mean, this looks almost like, like, I don't know, like fruity pebbles and milk or something, you know, something kind of looks like birthday cake, um, like the ice cream birthday cake, whatever mix. So I'm excited to recast this. I think this is going to be pretty cool. I'd imagine that black might be good or any solid color might be good with those skateboard shavings. So it should be interesting. I'm not sure when I'm going to get on that yet. Um, I have all kinds of things like lining up right now. So anyway, uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention before we get started is we got a new episode of the ResinCast podcast out, so go check that out. You can listen to it on our website, um, so all the episodes are always going to be on the ResinCast.com, but it's probably easier for most people just to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play. Um, I, I need to talk to Casey. I'm not sure exactly where all we're at, but I do know that we're on those two. I think SoundCloud, you can find it there too. Um, one thing that I want to find out, um, I don't know if we've looked into it. I don't think we're on there. Um, I'm, not, I'm just not sure what we need to do is to get it on um, Spotify. I think that would be smart if it's, if it's just a matter of uploading them. So be looking for our podcast. We're going to be doing this. Uh, we're, we're trying to do weekly episodes at this point. We didn't like... Uh, when we started out, we kind of went a little bit slow. You know, we were, we were testing the water, seeing if people uh, enjoyed the show and all that stuff. And so far, we've gotten a really good reaction. So um, the problem with doing it every two weeks, we would sometimes even record every week 
So we'd have things kind of banked. And <laughs> the problem is we're talking, you know, like we're recording something and we're talking about timely things. And then we may not have, have uploaded the, the episode for like a month. And so we're talking about stuff that happened way long ago. So I re- really like this, this weekly episode thing. Um, and, and we've kind of changed the format to where we just kind of ask each other questions. And so we, we, we extract the topic of the show out of those questions, but neither of us know what, what the other's going to ask. So it's kind of fun. We get to expand and, and, and share our thoughts on kind of new ideas every week. So uh, make sure to check it out. We talk about, you know, resin casting, stabilizing, turning stuff. Um, that's pretty much all the focus of it. And even um, we talk a little bit about like the selling aspect uh, of, of, you know, like either selling blanks or selling, you know, products. Sometimes we'll kind of talk about that stuff like social media. So we kind of try to cover the, you know, like what we do, basically what we're all kind of in, in, into <laughs> Casey and I. So anyway, I hope you guys are all doing good. We'll get all, we got all the announcements, I think, out of the way at this point. So it looks like we got a a healthy crowd going on. So like I said, I hope everybody's doing good today. Um, Pretty crazy. So it's Wednesday hump day. Um, So let's see here. We're going to switch to the turning view. So we're all chucked up. Well, it's the the blank isn't chucked up, but we got the chuck up. So again, we got uh, this little, this little goodie right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill out the the bottom of this thing. And and so we can use our, our universal mandrel from uh, uh, stainless bottle stoppers. So I'm just gonna kind of get that sort of ready to go there. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is, is square up the bottom of this blank. Make sure that's good and tight. It's, it's not necessarily dead square, um, but we'll, we'll be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with a Forstner bit and that'll just carve out a, a square flat um, surface. And then when we come in and drill and tap the threads, then we're good to go. Like it's going to be, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll mate up perpendicular. It'll, it'll, it'll fit on this perpendicularly. So there's no gaps or anything weird going on. Uh, let, me, let me fire up my iPhone so I can kind of keep an eye on the chat a little bit. It's kind of hard to sometimes, but you know. There I am. All right. In the live chat. Okay. Yeah, it looks like lots of people are here. Martian just showed up. Billy's here. Alex is here. What's up? Benny and Kim. I think Kim was here. Who's here first? Uh, it looks like Billy, Woody, Ghost, and Brian was here early. Nice. Way to go. Dominic and Doug. I got the, the pumps, Doug. Thank you for sending those out. I am kind of, I, I said that I wanted to kind of try not using pumps, and I got to be honest, I really like the pumps. <laughs> Even if they may be tough to get sometimes, I think I, I like having pumps. All right, so I'm going to get my dust collector kind of set up. I'm not going to turn it on just yet. Let me get some glasses on, and we will just, like I said, I'll, you don't need to go too deep on this. You just need to make sure that you flatten that surface. So let me make sure that the picture's good before I go any further yeah looks like we're good looks like we're good all right so here we go so just to kind of flatten that surface up and now it's going to be square to you know how, how it's running and then next, we're com- we'll come in with our, I think this is a 5 sixteenths. Is that right? 5 sixteenths drill bit. Pretty sure. And I got a little mark on there that kind of tells me how deep I need to go. Kind of helps out when you're doing these stoppers. There's a couple different ways you can do this. I typically just tap threads into the material and this burl should be plenty like hard. It'll, it'll take tap, uh, you know, it take threads well, I think. Um, usually, you know, I'm tapping threads into a, like a resin or just resin epoxy or, or lumalite. 
and those take threads excellent the other alternative way that you can go for these things if you're doing like stoppers or handles or anything that that takes the you know the 3816 threads that will fit on the universal mandrel which is quite a few like bottle openers a lot of the like uh, uh, ice cream scoops all that kind of stuff the alternative way is you just drill a half inch hole and then glue in one of these brass inserts and then that will accept you know the, the same it'll fit on the mandrel at that point and all that kind of stuff problem i have with that is then you got to wait for the glue to dry and all that and it's not entirely necessary i don't think nope. all right so we'll get this thing so i'm using a, a 3 8 16 tap and i'm just putting a little pressure on the tailstock there spinning it by hand and then we'll kind of back it out a little bit and go in I'm using a bottoming tap, so this will go all the way to the bottom. If you're using one of the starting taps, I forget what they're called technically, um, they're going to be more tapered, and it won't thread all the way to the bottom. Oh, my chuck came loose. It's a good idea to tighten that chuck, probably. So I'm, I'm going to grab a hold of this, because sometimes this thing will... I, this is a, a keyless chuck, and so sometimes it can come loose on me. All right, so sometimes I like to just grab a hold of it. That way it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm just going to keep going until it bottoms out. There it goes. All right. Easy peasy. And then before we move anything or do anything, it's always a good idea to just make sure that this works. <laughs> you know, you don't want to just walk away, take it out of the chuck, and then be like, oh, I messed up. All right, so we're good to go. Pop this guy out of here. And uh, this is the universal mandrel. Um, the, it has bushings. Um, so this is from stainless bottle stoppers. The nice thing is it's kind of like pen kits where they have different bushings depending on the kit. And this one is, I think, the 13 sixteenths, I want to say, something like that. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me... I'm not sure what, what the number is. I, this, I, I don't change it a whole lot, so it's just... I know it's the bottle stopper one. Eight. Ten. And that might be 13 sixteenths. Hmm... Yeah, it looks like 13 sixteenths, I think, is what that this sleeve is. But they have different ones for different kits. Um, and it'll match up to what that, what that bushing does. Let me go get one. This is the same diameter as the actual, like, you know, stopper piece. So... It's the same diameter as that, so it gives you a guide when you're turning, so you don't have to pull out the calipers every time and try and get, you know, nail it. All right, let's get our chuck off of here. Let's see, will that fit? Ooh, barely fits in my drawer, nice. All right, so let's see what you guys are doing here. How do you level the interior of a pressure pot? Yeah. Um, some people actually just pour resin in them. <laughs> I don't know if I like that idea, but um, that's one way. But yeah, the way that I do it is I, I actually, so that's one of the reasons I like the CA Technologies pots uh, in general. That's why I kind of started using them. Um, the TCP Global, and I, well, it kind of depends. I think some of the California air tools, but the pots that have the little, uh, you know, that hold, that have a little bracket for casters, I actually mount my pots to a surface and then level them. You know, I just have a torpedo level, put it in the pot and kind of get them leveled. Um, it is kind of tough to get them dead level um, sometimes, though. And if you move it around or, you know, 
you're putting it on different surfaces that aren't level then it you know even if you poured the resin in this is why i don't like that idea people just literally pour epoxy into the bottom of their pot the problem is if you move the pot like you know where you poured it as long as you leave it there that's fine it's going to be level but if you move it to a different surface that's not level or not the same as where it was when you poured it then it's not going to be level so it's kind of a kind of a weird one let's see here all right so hopefully that helps out um, yeah and depending on it also really depends on the pressure pot because the, the ca technologies pots are relatively flat they're not as dished as a harbor freight but the easiest way is to just you know either put a piece of hdpe um, turner's warehouse actually sells little discs that that go in the pressure pots and it's not necessarily gonna like level it you know you still got to make sure that everything's level when you you know on the surface but i'm pretty sure i'm almost certain that Turner's Warehouse sells these things and you just drop it down in there and then you got a non-stick um, surface to put in the bottom. I have a piece of plywood that I use right now. The problem is those, those Chad sent those to me, but I don't have a, those fit in the nine inch, like the Harbor Freight size pots, but CA Technologies is bigger and it just, it doesn't fit perfect. My other thing does. I usually don't spill too much in there haven't yet anyway all right so let's get this thing rolling here what do you guys think um i think i'm gonna trade out for my six inch rest and we're gonna go with a the, the easy wood tools finisher the round cutter with the negative rake that's set up right. And we'll get our live center. Ouch. Ready to roll. All right. Finally ready here. Nicholas, what's going on? Oh, you do have a CA. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I leveled it. I put little shims and things underneath those little feet and then kind of bolt it down. Uh, watch how, how tightly you bolt it. You don't need to crank them down. That can actually kind of tweak them and the, and the lid may not seal. So just be, you know, it's, it's kind of a fine line. You want it to be tight, but you don't want to like crush it down. Um, I've seen that happen to people where they couldn't get the lid to work and it was because they had it you know they were they you know bolted it down with such pressure that it was kind of tweaking the pot so just don't do that but i just you know level it with those feet and you're good to go all right so let's get this thing rolling here what do you guys think there we go get you guys in so you can see what's happening here there we go. So far, it feels like turning epoxy. It's turning well. turn a fan on so these so the dust goes somewhere else a little bit let's so turn the dust collector on
All right, let's see where we're at here. Uh, it's a dust collector. All right. Everything's looking good. Uh, one, one thing to mention, you know, if, if, if you have a square blank, um, just, just be aware that, you know, the, the resin pieces, when they come off, you know, you got your hand right here, and it can kind of hit you with little chips of, you know, resin. It's, when it's on, you know, when you're knocking the corners off, you get some shards flying at you, and it can kind of get you in the face and on your fingers. So just be aware of that. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's not a bad idea to just go to the bandsaw and knock off the corners of blanks. Uh, it just, you know, it'll kind of save your fingers a little bit. But everything's looking good. It's turning like, you know, anything else, pretty much. Uh, let's see what you guys are up to. OJ's here. What's up, man? Woohoo! I was just looking at the chat and I got a, a notification that my new iPhone came. I'm in the like upgrade program thing. So I have a, I've got a prize waiting for me at home. What shape are we going for? I don't even know. I was just, I honestly haven't even thought about it. A lot of times with bottle stoppers, this is one of the reasons why I really like turning. Um, you know, if you're doing woodworking, if you want to make a bookshelf, you better know the dimensions. You can't just start cutting wood and be like, oh, I'll just see what happens. You know, <laughs> you got to really kind of know what you're doing where you can just kind of let things, you know, fly uh, when you're turning stuff. So it's, it makes it kind of fun. Um, I'm probably not going to get too, too crazy uh, necessarily. Maybe just go for kind of a, I don't know. Let me stop and look. There's a couple shapes that I've really liked in the past. I got a box of stoppers and things that's not it let's see sometimes my brain can't identify let's let's do like a ooh that would be fun i kind of like this idea kind of digging this shape what do you guys think about that simple I'll try to kind of sort of mimic that a little bit. <clears throat> Happy new iPhone. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, it's not going to be. I already had the 11 Pro and it works pretty good. It's had a couple of mess ups when I was video recording stuff. So that's kind of why I'm a little bit excited to try the new one out. Um, so we'll have to see. There's not a whole lot of like, you know, major benefits to the to the 12 over the 11 Pro, I don't think. But since I'm, I just kind of decided a few years ago, if I'm gonna use the iPhone as my recording studio, I'm just gonna get the newest one every year. May as well. get you guys in the action here a little bit better on on that kind of side of it there So just a little bit of a cove on the inside. I still need to, to true up the outside of this. It's not. It's still a little bit bumpy. Um, but we'll just kind of kind of do a little bit of a, a swoop out, and then just kind of you know flatten it. I, I I just didn't finish off the top of this, so we're not we're not doing that necessarily. So tis the season for 
uh, you know, holiday gifts and all that kind of good stuff. And I got to be honest, one of the simplest things to make is a bottle stopper. Um, you know, it, it's just, you, you can chuck it up, you, you can turn it in about 10 minutes and you got something like, if you got to go to a Christmas party or something like that, you know, uh, maybe pre-make pre a few, you know, like red, green, and white swirl, uh, maybe hybrid, you know, blanks, cut them all up and you got tons of like little gifts and things that are, you can just grab, you know, on the way and you can knock out a ton of things really quickly uh, bottle openers too Uh, one other little announcement, reminder, um, for people that are on, uh, that are not close to Phoenix, let's say, you're probably a little too late at this point. Uh, well, no, you could probably make it. Um, you're, get, you're getting really close to the deadline for, for getting your ornaments into Turner's Warehouse. So that the, they, they need to have it in their hands on the 9th. So just remember that. Uh, if you're kind of like on the East Coast or, you know, kind of far away from Phoenix, and it's gonna take a few days. You, you might need to kind of get that thing in the mail tomorrow kind of thing. All right, so. <clears throat> We need to take this end down a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit longer. This is kind of tall, so I think we might kind of cut it down, part it off about, right about here maybe. Um, but we need to take this diameter in a little bit and then we'll just kind of swoop it out and then kind of pop it over. So, pretty simple one. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is, it, and, and that's another reason why turning so nice, you know. Um, especially like smaller projects like this, um, like there's not this long wait for finishing. You know, the fin a lot of times when you're, I don't know, sometimes people put like oil finishes on stuff and it's not like a matter of, oh, let me just knock this thing out in 30 minutes. Like, it's gonna be like a weekend or so sometimes for even small, you know, woodworking. Uh, projects and gifts and things so turning has, has a lot of advantages plus if you're just impatient like me and then obviously there's a lot of advantage to turning because it's like instant gratification I don't know if I'm doing a very good job on this or not. Sort of. It's kind of, I think it's kind of in line. I'm actually, I'm gonna bring this, uh, this uh, swoop up a little bit. I'm not very good at copying things, obviously.
think I got that pretty close now. I think, I think we're actually on track. I think we're on the right track here. It just looks funny because it's got this giant hump on the top. We're going to cut that off mostly. All right, let's stop it and just see what the surface is looking like. Some of these shavings thrown in here. Um, one thing, these the shavings are not very, like some of the epoxies are very um, stringy. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to, I'm not even sure how to explain it really. Um, I really actually like these shavings. They don't seem to be very staticky. They're not like, they don't, they're, they're easy to rip, you know? So um, it's very similar to turning Alumilite clear slow set, I think, or just Alumilite clear. It's turn, turning fine. I, I really didn't think that there was gonna be any, anything kind of weird about turning it. I think it's totally viable. I think most people, if you, you know, if you've been turning resin for a little bit, I think you're gonna just kind of think, oh yeah, that's just kind of typical. I think Jake's doing some, uh, some deep pour projects as well. So if you're kind of curious to see, you know, how does this work for turning related projects, um, make sure to, you know, check out Jake Thompson. That's looking pretty close. We just need to take some more of this stuff off here. And we'll 
will be good to go, I think. So I'm going to pull out the parting tool. It's looking like a, bi a bottle stopper, I think. What do you guys think? Oh, bouncy. So let's uh, let's get you guys kind of a. We'll hit it with a little bit of denatured alcohol, so we can kind of see what what it's looking like on the inside. Before we sand. Should give you a little bit of a view on the inside of this thing, though. A little bit. Still need to polish it, but I think this is going to look pretty cool. There's a few bubbles on the surface, so that kind of sucks, but, you know, I mean, most people, unless they're a resin casting, you know, wood turner, <laughs> they're probably not going to have a clue that that was not supposed to be there. So it still looks good, and obviously it turns fine. Um, that's the beauty of, you know, these blanks trying to like salvage stuff. It's not that big of a deal a lot of times. It's not like, like unless you have like massive separations and things along the, the edge, which I had a few, um, but you know, not most of it. Um, as long as you got a decent bond with the wood and everything, it, it'll turn fine. And even though the resin overheated, it, it really, it just kind of cracked and like released heat. Um, so, you know, n nothing wrong with this, this resin. To turn it or anything like that that's the beauty of this the only time that you're going to really run into a serious problem is if you didn't mix or measure your resin correctly then and then mixed it together and it didn't set up that's when you're screwed like there's really not much you can do about that <sighs> nick is not here for the sanding who's nick who's nick Ah, Steve's here. What's up, man? Mr. Temple Boy. Yeah, there's quite a few Davids out there. A couple Steves, Stevens. Eric likes the sanding. Oh, and that's one thing that I was going to mention. So I was kind of talking about, you know, should I... I don't think I'm going to do live stream, you know, working on the, the Millennium Falcon... Um, you know, like the, the things that I filled the cracks. I think what I'm going to do is just, I think that some people would enjoy seeing what I do, you know, and, and like kind of covering some of the stuff. So I'm just, I'm going to just shoot like kind of a quick video, um, that kind of walks through, you know, what did I actually do? Kind of explain the steps. Um, probably not a lot of video, just kind of in general, kind of show some shots of like one, you know, type. Cause I'll probably use my random orbit sander on the thing. Um, going up through, um, you know, I, I don't know, like maybe 400, 600, something like that. Actually, probably higher than that. I'll probably go to, I might try to go to 1,000 possibly with the, the random orbit sander and then um, and then finish off with, you know, like wet sanding with, with uh, like a different method. And I'll, I'll try and kind of go through and show what I do and explain, you know, what I do, but I'm not going to... It's not, I, I don't think that it's going to take hours, <laughs> you know, hours of, of just standing there with an, a random orbit sander, uh, which uh, for the live stream also, it's going to be making a racket. It's not like I can talk or anything. It's, it's just going to be kind of silly for, for a live stream. Oh, the flaming turner. Okay, cool. Uh, do I ever make a card cutout storyboard? No, I don't really get, do anything like that. <laughs> I just wing it. Honestly, that's a good idea. I just, yeah, I don't typically really even plan too much ahead with turning. So I'm just going to do a little bit more, kind of refine this, this curve a little bit. That is a good idea, though.
All right, I think that's pretty good. Let's, uh, I'm gonna get rid of that excess on the end and, and try and kind of come in here and do a little bit of work on, on that, on, on the end a little bit. But I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna leave this raised up a little bit. I just wanna get rid of this kind of nub. Turn that down just a little bit. It's gonna be kind of chattery. Let me just make sure that I got this thing tightened on the, okay. Probably gonna come in with my, yeah, I'm gonna come in with a thin parting tool. I got a, a 16th parting tool that should make that go, make that noise go away a little bit. But it is gonna be chattery no matter what. And this is probably not entirely necessary what I'm doing, but my OCD is kicking in and I just want to get rid of that little extra focus on what's in front of me, you know? So here's the 1 16th. There we go. Feel better already. How do you guys feel? <laughs> yeah, I know. That that is true. I a lot of times I'll plan something and it doesn't exactly come out how I thought that I wanted it. So <clears throat> That's not entirely why I don't, you know, plan a lot of stuff. I just, I enjoy just, just kind of having fun with it a lot of times. A lot of the things that I make don't really, you know, it's not like it needs to be some specific thing in the first place, so I don't do that. Now, I do have a project coming up. So the, the lamp, the pine cone lamp, which is actually sitting right over here, um, that thing is, I, I have a specific plan for that. Um, which is part of the, here's, here's the other problem. And so that's also the reason why you haven't seen that turned yet. <laughs> part of, part of the problem. Um, cause when it, when it has to be a certain way, a lot of times I kind of procrastinate and make sure that I have everything, you know, my ducks in a row kind of thing. So I'm going to bring the tailstock back up just, just for a little bit while I'm kind of nibbling I can, I can kind of do a little bit of stuff on the outside of this, um, but I want to bring it up to, to do sanding. So we'll turn this back on and we'll bring up the tailstock. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that off so I'm not worried about that point going in. And I'm going to come back with the negative rake hollower. You, you could, you, you know, another thing that I could do is come in with the detailer, I guess, actually. This would be a good tool to kind of work on in tight quarters like this. So that, that actually worked quite well, probably better than the, uh, the number one, just to kind of, you know, start working on getting this, um, getting the top surface here kind of ready for sanding and everything. And then at the end, when everything's kind of done, I'm gonna, I'll come in and, and do the, the final bit. All right, so let's see here. This thing isn't necessarily that great, uh, the, the surface. It's, it's okay, but there's, there's a good amount of tool marks. Plus we have some burl wood with a couple little like crack things and all this going on. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna start with 120 on this one and just kind of just go up through. It's gonna take longer, but I think it's a good call. Make sure that this wood is sanded well and we'll be good to go. Turn that speed down to about 300. And that'll take care of all of my tool marks and sloppy, sloppy turning basically. But it'll make sure that this wood is nice and sanded up.
biggest thing is you want to start with a nice smooth surface when you're when you're sanding and you know when you're polishing um, that's I think I think that's one of the problems that some people run into is they just don't really get the the initial surface those tool marks and little things going on taken out and so you know you have the tendency to, to you want to start as high as possible with sandpaper but sometimes you, you skip a few that you really needed to cover so this is a little bit overkill but this this burl is so hard and dense that you really kind of need to use a, a real you know something kind of a, a pretty coarse grit to sand that that wood Yeah, there's, uh, Brian was asking about smaller, um, smaller scale. Um, I have a, I started out on a, a mini, I don't know, they call this a midi lathe, but it's really pretty mini, I think. Um, the Comet. Um, and it worked fine. I mean, it was fine. Uh, I bought a bigger lathe because I wanted to do bigger projects, you know, down the road. But I mean, most of what I use my big lathe for is small, like pens and <laughs> bottle stoppers. Um, so you know but you you this thing can turn you know a reasonable size bowl i i would look into depending on what your um your budget is i really like the laguna uh, like midi lathe they call that one um, it's a little bit heftier than the, that that comet back there a couple more dollars but it's a really nice lathe like it will do a lot of stuff it's hefty um so it just kind of depends, but I mean, they got some like there, there's like the, the Rikon, which has like, you have to change the belts to change speed. And, you know, so it depends on what you're, you're comfortable with. I personally, I really like having a variable speed. I like reverse. I kind of like the bells and whistles on, on my lathes. Um, and I'm willing to pay for that. But if you're just looking to, you know, get started on something, wanting something cheap, um, the, the, the Rikon, I don't know what like the number is, but it's basically going to be like the cheapest Rikon mini lathe is a really good lathe. Um, it's gotten, you know, excellent reviews from people. Uh, Peter Brown, I think he had one of those and he's done, I mean, most of the amazing stuff that he's made was made on that lathe, I think. So that just goes to show you. Yeah, you definitely don't need a big lathe. It's just, you know, I, I wanted to buy a lathe that was kind of like the last lathe that I need <laughs> type thing. Um, I didn't really want to mess around with like a, a, I wanted a full size, but I didn't want to buy like a kind of, you know, something that really wasn't going to be satisfactory. And I knew I was going to end up someday replacing it. This was kind of the, the last lathe I'll ever need kind of deal. And I've been so far very happy with it has met that uh, expectation so far. I, I, I don't really, I, I don't, it's not like I'm looking on the market going, oh man, I really wish I had, you know, this lathe instead. Okay, so I think that is going to be quite good. I think we got a very good start on this. So let's move up to 180. Now, here's the thing, guys. There's a lot of these little cracks and things going on. I don't, I don't know what to do. I think what we're going to do is actually... <sighs> I think we're going to go the paste route. I, 
when I did the X-Wing <coughs> excuse me, sphere, I decided to try, um, what's it called? Uh, the EEE Ultra Shine paste stuff. And I really liked it, actually. It, it seemed to work for me the way that I it would expect that pro type of product to work. So why don't we do it that way? That's not my favorite method. Um, but I don't really want to have to fill all these little cracks, really. Uh, that's It would be better, but if I was going to put like a CA finish on, I, you definitely would have to fill those. Um, I don't know. Um, but putting a paste on will also bring out the, the beauty of the wood a little bit. It's got the, the oils in it. So let's just go that route and, and see what I can get. I don't typically do too well <laughs> with pastes. But like I said, that the Ultra Shine stuff, I actually got really good results with that um, on the X-Wing Sphere for like the first time ever using a paste. <clears throat> so let's just kind of see. So we started at 120. We're going to go to 180 now. And that's just me because I don't, I don't know. I think that I have higher expectations of what m most of those pastes are going to do. But so far, the, the, what I did with the, the Tripoli was I, I, I sanded up to 1,000, I think. I want to say maybe, maybe 1,500. I think it was just 1,000. And, uh, and then used that paste stuff, gave it a few coats of that, and then uh, and finished up with the buffing. And I, and I was pretty happy. I mean, it, it worked out well. Took out all the sanding scratches. And then the buffing took care of the rest, the way that it's kind of supposed to work. So let's try that out and just see. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not advocating using that stuff necessarily, but I think it'll work okay for this project. I'm making the noise? What noise was I making? Oh, the <laughs> when I was turning that off. <sighs> Planning is for losers. No. I just don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes, like I said, but most most of the things that I make don't necessarily re require a whole lot of planning or anything. And Brian, you mentioned, you know, you don't have a, a workshop space. One thing that I will mention is I've actually seen, I don't know if you have a truck, a pickup truck, but they have um, trailer hitch lathe mount things that you can buy, um, which might be kind of an interesting, I've actually seriously considered doing, doing that sometime, you know, if, if we go like camping or something like that. Probably wouldn't be turning resin at that point outdoors, <laughs> you know, but you don't want all that. Uh, the shavings to get all, everywhere, but um, it'd be kind of fun to turn wood. You could find stuff and just turn it there. So if you didn't have like a, a sh you know workspace, that might be something just just something to throw out there. Uh, you know, I mean, you don't need to use that type of thing necessarily, but uh, those mini lathes are nice because they can be set up anywhere pretty much. Just put it on a little cart of some sort table and they're they're light you know I don't, I don't know how much that weighs but you know I can easily pick it up and move it around definitely a, you know with two people easily just to save your back
It'll give it a little bit of a sideways here, just to kind of I want to make sure that I'm giving this the, the best chance of, of looking good, but this, this is feeling pretty good. I mean, this really seriously feels not, not different, not a lot different than, than Illumilite Clear. Uh, and I usually use the slow set. Not a whole lot of difference between, if any, between the regular set and slow, but sands similar. It's not um, like liquid diamonds can be pretty, uh, I don't know how to explain it. The shavings are just super staticky and they're almost kind of sticky feeling. And some, some epoxies can be like that. Um, this is more like dusty. It, it, it doesn't feel, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, I like it. It's, it's familiar, similar to, to what I'm kind of used to. Just trying to kind of give some some of my thoughts and, and you know, what, I, what am I, what am I seeing here? What am I feeling? So I think it's time. Let's, let's uh, come in here and, and finish up this top here. Now we're going to start getting into the kind of finer grits. So I'd rather just have this all finished up so we can just sand the whole thing. I wanted to have a little bit of extra support while I was kind of, you know, doing the initial sanding to get it smooth. Sometimes if it's kind of wanting to vibrate a little bit, it doesn't make sanding go too well. All right, so glasses back on. And now this time I am going to come out with the, the, the oh, that's actually the wrong cutter. That's a regular cutter. Give me my negative rake. I was doing something. Uh, what was I doing? I was doing something wooden. A polar. I don't know what a polar drill is. That sounds interesting though. I'm just going to change out the the cutter on this to the negatives. And if, if you're doing resin turning for if, if for anybody out there, it, I, I, I kind of take it for granted because I've since these came out, I was all about them. The negative rate cutters. If, if you're having any issues with with resin turning, if it's kind of chippy or anything, seriously, try the negative rate cutters from Easywood Tools because they really help um, a lot. Um, they really kind of make. They, they're very forgiving. Um, if you kind of, a lot of times, if you make a mistake, if you kind of move wrong <laughs> a little bit, um, you know, with the regular cutters, uh, the, the regular carbides, and I actually even just, you know, your normal, um, you know, gouges and stuff, regular, like traditional tools. Um, if you kind of make a mistake, it usually costs you, you know, where these things are, I mean, I can literally hold these things one handed. It's not going to catch. Hopefully you guys saw that. I don't know if you saw that. I can't see what's happening. But I, I, you can one hand these things, it, you know, and it really is not going to catch on you or, or mess up the blank. So I got my hand here. I mean, that, that alone right there, that tells me that these things are user friendly. If I tried to do that with a standard cutter, it would just dig in and twist. Most likely. All right, we got rid of that little hole there. Let's come back now, slow it down, slow it down again. 
Taco mac and cheese, oh my goodness. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on, on the chat. Man, I missed it. What am I doing here? <sighs> yeah, the Jet Mini is pretty good. Um, some of them are, you know, they, they have a bunch of different models. Jet makes some good ones. Um, Rikon makes really good lathes. Most people like them quite a bit. Um, trying to think, what else have I seen here? I mean, most, you know, most of them are fine. I don't know that there's too many that people are like, oh, that's terrible, stay away from that. Sometimes Harbor Freight can be a little, eh, you know. But I, I think most people actually like the the Harbor Freight lathes. There's there's one that's super cheap and it has like weird attachments, like that that would be a pain. Just wanna make sure you get one that, that takes the standard, you know, attachments and things. Morse Taper 2 is common for the inside of the, you know, your spindle. And then a one inch eight tooth per inch um, thread on the outside. I would recommend looking for something like that. I'm gonna come back, oh, that was loud. And uh, kind of work on this, it's kind of bumpy. Kind of had to take a lot out in the middle. So it kind of left this between the edge and, and the center of the blank. A little bit thick. Man, I missed that. I'm, I'm way behind on the chat. Jeez. Here we go. I'm, I'm okay now. I think I'm caught up. Let's get that out of the way. All right. Back to 180. Don't ruin your dinner, Jen. <laughs> she, Caitlin needs some negative rate cutters, which is weird because she does demos for Easywood tools. I can't believe she doesn't have any. She kind of just started working with resins, though, she, so she may not really have thought about it. I don't think she's done too many resin projects, if I'm not mistaken. She kind of just got into casting. I, don't, I guess I don't know if she's turned very many resin things. But I, I like it a lot better. It just, it, it's, you know, it works. Like some, some of the other tools, like if, if you really want to hog off a lot of material, then, you know, you might want to go with the regular cutter or, um, you know, gouges can, can typically kind of take off more material quicker. Um, so that's, and, and that's actually a strategy that you could use, you know, like if you're not that worried about the surface and you just want to take material off, you know, maybe go for standard cutter and, and, and hog it away and then, you know, to, to kind of finish up, switch out. But man, I'll tell you what, it's just a lot more enjoyable for me not having to worry about, the, you know, little chipping and catches and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot more enjoyable time turning, I find. Um, and actually the biggest thing for me, cause I didn't really have too many problems with like pen turning 
you know, with, with resin. Um, the biggest difference for me was hollowing because I mean, I just literally got to the point where I was like, I'm not doing it if it's resin. It just, it, I got so many catches and everything and I'd be like literally white knuckling the thing and still get catches all the time. And it just, it wasn't even fun. Now, my favorite tool to play with is the number one hollower getting on the inside of blanks because it's just fun now. It's, it's relaxed, enjoyable, you know? And that was one of the biggest things for me. There were just projects that I would just pass on because it just, it wasn't, it wasn't even going to be fun to turn. So <laughs> what's the point, you know? Now it's kind of changed things. So I'm, 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 I'm liking that. Um, I, it doesn't smell. I mean, it kind of has a little bit of, there is, you know, certain resins kind of can have, like you can identify some, some of them. It, I don't know. It, it did have a little bit of a, an epoxy smell, but not bad or anything like that. It, you know, I think Alumalite Clear kind of has a unique smell, but it's not strong. It's kind of the same idea. Um, I could tell it was an epoxy, but it wasn't like overwhelming. Uh, I don't, I don't know if maybe <laughs> I'm just used to, you know, how resins smell now. I, I don't know, but the biggest one for me, and it, and it hasn't, you know, working with resins for many years now has not changed this. If somebody chucks up polyester resin, that stuff smells horrid um, when you're turning it. I, I can't stand that stuff. And so, you know, most of the other resins don't really have a like a nauseous smell to me but i can usually identify epoxy when i'm turning it has kind of a specific smell all right and another tip you saw me just wipe this off with uh, denatured alcohol i really highly recommend you do that between each grit just to get rid of any lingering grit particles that could have come off the way sandpaper works is it's going to break off chunks of that abrasive and expose new, you know, pieces on the paper. And so, you know, it's a good idea to, to wipe off that surface, get those, those particles off of there. Um, I, I think that that will result when you get to the end, you'll find scratches and it's because there's, I think that's at least a contributor, a, a big, big contributor to that problem. Uh, okay. So we did 180. We need 240. Where are we at here? What's going on? 120. I gotta get organized here. Get my papers, get my sandpapers organized. Go with a little bit of 240. Where are we at here, speed wise? 300. All right. Yeah, hollowing stabilized stuff can be dusty at least. Uh, I haven't tried any any other ones. You're an unstable turner. That's okay. We still love you. In fact, that might be why some people do love you. Jamie Page with the super chat. What's up, brother? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We're doing a little bit of sanding, if you couldn't tell. Turn in one of those salvage blanks from this from the mess up. The mess up has turned into some pretty cool projects, actually. So I think I should quit labeling it as a mess up. Just be like, yeah, I meant to do that. I just tricked you guys. Should have titled it, How You Can Make a Gigantic Blank. <laughs> pour one, one, one pour and get tons of blanks out of it. <laughs> I know, I saw the disco lights. They were so cool. Are those things hooked up to like, um, are they like smart lights or anything? I've seen people hook those types of things up for... for live streams which actually i gotta be honest i was seriously thinking about doing that I, i've been looking into that someday for the stream i got a lot of planning to do we were just talking about i don't really plan a lot on my turning projects but 
Um, I want to do a, a, a big kind of planning session in December, like probably between Christmas and New Year's. I want to sit down and really kind of have a think about all everything that I do with YouTube and all, everything, like the whole the whole deal. Um, I didn't really do that last year. I usually do, and I was just kind of like, I know exactly what's going on. It's probably a good thing that I didn't do a planning <laughs> session, because COVID would have blown all of everything that I that I was like had thought of out of the water. So, but I, I knew I was doing certain things. I was supposed to be traveling a lot last year, and I was like, you know, we'll just I just have to get you know blanks made and do whatever on on videos in the middle of all that. So I'm not going to really do a big planning session this year. I wasn't really into it, but I'm I am ready to do sit down and kind of think about some things. So we're hopefully I'll, I'll we'll be improving and you know a few changes, not a lot of changes, changes, but kind of t mix, mixing things up next year. Um, come up with some different ideas on how to make things, you know, add things to stuff and all that. Let's see what did M Michelle ask? <laughs> what tools should you start out with? Um, just getting started with wood turning. Well, I mean, it depends on what you want to do, kind of. I, if I, if if somebody asked me, I think one of the, like you can get away with just buying um, one of the round uh, round uh, carbide tools. And I'm not even going to necessarily say that you got to go buy you know easy wood tools. We were just talking about the negative rate cutters, which I think are you know awesome uh, if you're going to turn resin that's a good way to go so the easy wood tools make sense um, but you can do so many things you can do the outsides you know shaping spindles you can hollow with this one and this this one this size is just kind of the average the the general size i don't know the the cutter size on this is is well the tool size this one is the mini finisher is what they call this from easy wood tools and it's uh, i think a ci3 cutter but you can do so many things with with one tool. Um, that's that's a good way to go um, if you want a, an idea. They also sell a set that has the round, square, and detailer in it. That's not a bad way to go. I don't know. It a lot of it really just depends on what you're what you want to what do you want to turn. Also, you know, I think that's the big question. Yeah, that's a good, that's, you know, if you can get your hands on tools, right now is probably not the most available time to just walk down the street and go try something with our current situation. But if you do know someone that can kind of show you some stuff, that's a good way to go. Um, I, the car, carbide is a good way to go, though. If you're just getting started and you're just, you know, generally, I just want to turn some stuff. Um, it's hard for me to recommend to go buy gouges that need to, that you need to also then buy a sharpening system and all these things. You can do all kinds of stuff with carbide and, and it's just a matter of replacing the cutter, not sharpening the tool. So that's kind of the way that I usually go for, for beginners is what I recommend. And frankly, I mean, that's what I use most of the time anyway. And I've been turning for a while. The gouges do have a place, and I and I use them for certain things, but I think it's more fun to just get started with turning rather than figure out a bunch of stuff. Pro size number one, sweet. Is it what size cutter does that have? Because I, really, I actually like the, the, the CI5 for hollowing resin. I kind of find that to be a better way to go with a smaller surface area. For a lot of things.
All right, I'm trying to do a pretty, pretty uh, thorough job with the sanding. So it's gonna take a little longer than sometimes I normally take, although the results are probably gonna be a lot better than they normally are. <laughs> so you give and take, you know what I mean? But I haven't actually, besides the, you know, the, the, the lamps, um, I haven't really seen how this stuff polishes up on, on the lathe. So I want to do, I want to try and give it a good, good job this first time here. And so I'm going to wipe off in between grits here, a little bit of denatured alcohol. <clears throat> so we are at 400 grit now. It's got a CI3, nice. That's not too bad. The, the big round one, that thing, it's good for, for hogging away stuff, but it's not really awesome because of the, because more, more cutter is really digging into the piece, it doesn't work as well. You got an exam tomorrow. Well, you should probably be studying, I think. Ah, oh, thanks for subscribing. I appreciate it. Go, good luck on your exam. You'll do great. I remember cramming for exams. It's been a while since I did that. Lee Valley, I don't, I don't know that it would, if you're buying, are we talking about easy wood tools? I think they have to be the same price everywhere, don't they? For the most part. Are we having fun watching the sanding happening? It's very exciting. All right, so let me look at this thing. It's good to have a nice bright light that you can use. So you can see all the little scratch marks. You can see some that are running sideways, which means I need to do a little bit more work. I'm just going to do a little bit of kind of hand sanding this way. All right. 
this end here. Sanding song? I know. I wish I wish we could have music. I think that's another reason why I can't really stand sanding even on the stream because typically I and this is why I usually I I don't have uh, why I have music playing in my my videos is because I I usually have the the radio cranked. It just makes this kind of tedious work a little bit easier, <laughs> you know, and not kind of just zone out. But we can't have music because then there'd be copyright stuff going on. And most of the, the non, I don't know, most of the non good, non copyrighted music is not really worth listening to. Typically. Not my favorite. That's, I always have a really tough time. People are like, oh, this music sucks that I, that I pick. And I'm like, it all sucks. But this is the best that I have. Unless you maybe spend like, you know, 13 hours trying to find the perfect song for your video. It's so tough. If I could outsource one part of my videos, I think it'd be finding music that fits. I'm sure somebody else is a lot better at that than me. <laughs> oh, they don't sell the Pro Series. Yeah. It does vary from pricing to pri from re retailer to retailer, huh? Surprising. All right, and that that piece is dead. So, let's uh wipe it off here with a little bit of denatured alcohol. You could probably just use like water or something. The thing is, denatured alcohol dries so fast. Um, and, you know, it's on wood, it's not like going to raise the grain, really. So, I would just personally rather use that myself. All right, so we're starting to get to the point where you can kind of almost see in there. Um, so, 400. Where's my 600 grit? I think at this point, I'm actually going to do a little bit of wet sanding here. I think that's the way that I should go. I'm going to... I got to go re like change out my water because it's disgusting. So let me go get some water and I think we'll, we'll switch over to the, the polishing papers, the Zona polishing papers. It's tough because I really do like wet sanding um, but it, you know it makes it a little bit it's not as easy a decision to just you know put some water on there when there's wood as well because then you're gonna have to kind of dry that but I'm all right with that I think that you know especially for a piece like this we'll use a little bit of water and then dry it off and then I'm gonna switch to the, the sanding paste the the Triple E Ultra Shine. And I think it'll be, I think we'll be good. That'll, that'll bring, you know, that'll put more, some oil and life back into the wood. We only need to wet sand with a, you know, like two, two grits maybe. Actually, I guess, let me think about this. The whole point is to, to use that stuff so let's let's try and see if we can just go to 600 because that's kind of what they say you can go to 600 i would rather go to a thousand let's just do that i don't believe the 600 propaganda so let's just dry sand up to a thousand and 
see what we get with the, the triple E ultra shine stuff. We gotta stick with the plan. All right. So now we got 600 grit and then I'm gonna do, probably do a thousand after this. And then we'll switch to that paste and then we'll, we'll see what we got. Still doing okay on time too. I'm not going particularly speedy on this, but sometimes you gotta go slow if you're taking care, you know? <laughs> you passed the blood test cuz cuz you bled. That's good. That's a good one. Weeks worth of study got him through the blood test. Man. Dang, I missed a lot. Jeez. Sorry about that. It's hard to keep up with the chat sometimes, you know. Thinking sanding Getting water cups that I don't need. All 
All right, and then we'll do a little bit of 1,000 grit. Let me clean off the surface again. I need more paper towels. Ooh. Oh, I, I forgot to show you guys. The dice came out cool, or fine, I guess. I don't, I don't know how cool they are, but they, they came out. They turned out fine um, that we made with the deep pour. They're nice and hard. I just saw these things. Let me get behind the camera so I can see what I'm doing. Not too bad. I got to get the, the sprue off and, and do a little bit of sanding and all that stuff. But they turned out fine, it seems. I didn't demold all of them, but they look fine. That one looks fine. Okay, 1,000 grit. I have some 1,000 somewhere. I think. There's some. Typically, I would use uh, water with silicon carbide paper, but trying not to use water. See how this all goes. Okay. I'm going to wipe this down for the last time. Let's try that, sh that Triple E Ultra Shine stuff and the funny thing is i didn't even realize it until i picked up this can it actually does have triple e the same you know stuff that i that i that you buff with it's got it's that's the abrasive that it has in it and so i didn't realize interesting fact okay so let's give this a shot let's see what we got this stuff has a little bit more of a like a solventy smell to it than like Yorkshire grit and other ones. Pretty pretty strong smell. I will say that, but like I said, it seems to work pretty good. It did it did once for me anyway. I actually want to try using, I, I, I want to get a different wheel, but I actually want to try just buffing with this stuff on a buffing wheel. I think that's what Ben does over at Ben's Works. I think he might use this stuff too. Be interesting to see how that works.
Seems pretty decent. I don't know. I think I'm gonna give it one more shot. One more round of this stuff. Oh, I'm caught on cords. Sorry, falling over. Let me turn this light off, that'll help. Let me get this thing kind of straight here. Oh, quit wiggling. Not too bad. Just shot from the kind of like the side here, sort of. Pretty happy with that myself. Um, I think I do want to give it one. I'm going to give it one more shot with this, the Tripoli. E. Just apply it one more time. It can't hurt anything, but there might be a couple scratches that it might remove that I can't see, maybe. I don't know. Actually, that looks pretty pretty darn good. Yeah, we'll give it one more shot. Does resin expand and contract with temperature change? Um, I don't, I mean, I'm sure it probably does just like, like every material will have some of that, but I would imagine that it, I don't know, it would have to be pretty significant temperature changes, I think, for it to matter, I guess. I don't know. I've never seen that. Usually your problems arise from, um, you know, like moisture and like, uh, to, you know, smooth surfaces, resin doesn't stick to that. Um, I don't know. Um, it doesn't, sh like, so most resins, like most of your epoxies and alumilite, they don't really shrink much when they're curing either. I know this isn't really a temperature question, but some people kind of think about that. And um, polyester resin does typically shrink a ton, um, but, but alumilite doesn't. Most epoxies don't either. I don't know. I've never, I've never noticed it, I guess. So, oh, what's wrong with my... My display was all funky. Um, I've not, like I said, I've never really noticed it, but I've also never really, well, expand and contract. One thing, if you, if you get things a little bit warm, you know, if, if, if uh, okay, so he, here's something where maybe I can give you something that actually has some meaning. Um, if you're drilling something out and you overheat the resin, that can kind of destabilize stuff like bonds between materials and stuff, which may be um, some sort of, you know, a, a expansion contraction type thing causing it. I don't know. Uh, and also so, some materials, I've seen people turning them and they like just turn into, they, they get really soft if they get warm. Um, so that can happen too, I guess, but I don't know. I guess you really don't want to overheat resin typically. You don't want to get it really hot um, in general. It just, it's not really that good for it. When you're sanding, it can kind of, if you, if you kind of overheat it when you're sanding, you can get some like burnish in scratch marks and stuff. So, I don't know. Good question. I don't really have, I don't think I really had a very good answer for you. <laughs> I don't know enough about that specific part of it never really I guess I've never really thought about it didn't didn't cross my mind before um, but that's interesting I guess um, 
it's making me think about things because sometimes you know you run into problems with things uh, and and that i never i don't know that that would have ever crossed my mind as being you know a cause of cert- something so uh, i'll it's going to i'm going to kind of keep my eyes out for you know cases where that might actually happen You get a clean sheet here. We're still going to buff this anyway. So, you know, this doesn't have to be like perfect or something. I don't know if that really helped a whole lot. There's still kind of a little bit of like a, like a, a little bit of oil, I guess, on it, sort of. That you can kind of push around. But all that's going to go in a second when we when we do our buffing. So let's get this thing off of here. But I so this I'm looking at this though, and in the surface I'm pretty sure that the buffing wheels should. Well, there's some scratches on the top. Hopefully the buffing wheels will take care of this. I don't know if you guys can see those. Might not have done as good a job as I could have on the the top part there. But the side of this thing is looking pretty wicked. So let's uh, spin you guys around to the buffing wheels. And so we're going to go back to, and so the reason that I tried this Tripoli stuff is uh, it's what Scott Wishart uses. And he's, he's the master of those X-Wing hybrid spheres. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to try his method, basically. And so he goes from that Tripoli stuff to the Tripoli wheel. And then he does white diamond, and I'm actually I, I like to finish up with a, a car polish now. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's get you guys. Oh, you guys didn't let's see what I was pointing at. Tripoli and white diamond. So now my mini lathe is just a, a buffing machine, pretty much. However, if I need to turn a pen or something like you know, if I have something chucked up on the lathe and I really can't take it off until I'm finished, but I need to turn a pen or do something. I wanted to keep this because it's a pretty, it's a great lathe, um, but I, it also, most of the time, it serves as a buffing machine at this point. So I'm going to put my, my mask on, and I'm down to, I'm down to the tiniest, saddest little nub of, of Tripoli buffing rouge. That's okay. It'll still work. Just got to really get, get a hold of this thing when you're charging the wheel. Otherwise, it goes flying. And then, so, and I got a light that probably doesn't have battery in it anymore. No. Let me, let me re- replace that. So I can see what I'm doing. I need to get a better light over there. Or at least, a, at least like a longer arm, bare minimum. But I really kind of do want high powered bright light. All right. So. Get this thing turned on. I'm going to turn it way up. I want to make sure that I can get out those those kind of little scratches that I saw on the top first. I think I did pretty good there. I think I think I got out what I was seeing.
All right, I think it's looking pretty good. Let's move over to the white diamond wheel. That's looking pretty good so far. I'm gonna pop it off of this mandrel real quick and get the bottom part. Didn't really do that before. All right, still got one more step, but this is looking pretty good so far. Oh, where are we at here? Zoom out. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. It's looking pretty clear to me. So let's give it the final, final step. I like to do a little bit of car polish and it just seems to bring out just a little, it's like squeezing out the last drop of orange, orange juice from your orange or something like that. Get just a little bit more um, gloss with this stuff than the white diamond. I think it's, it must be a, a slightly higher, finer abrasive. So this is just a string buff, super soft. And then I'm using the 105. I've, I've tried a few different ones. For some reason, this seems to be the best for me. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what... <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what... It, it, it's a little bit of a more cutting compound than some of the other ones that I tried, which doesn't exactly make sense, which kind of means that it's a lower grit. But for some reason, it just seems to work for me, so that's what I use. Shiny, yeah, not too bad. You're back, oh, you were driving, oh man. I'm <laughs> running out of rouge, the dead batteries, I know, it's been, sometimes it's tough. The struggle is real, guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna hit this light. Hopefully that won't totally blow you guys out. But the way that I like doing this is uh, one, I'm actually going to put some gloves on just so I'm not, I don't know, if, I, if there's anything on my hands, it's probably way overkill and not necessary, but I do it this way uh, when I'm doing like final polishing of stuff. I don't want to touch it. So I'm going to put some gloves on and, and what I do is I actually just kind of wipe some of this stuff onto the, onto a rag and then on, and then I wipe it onto this piece and then just buff it off basically. So, oh, and this stuff is kind of thick, so I don't even like, I, the, the, the stupid little nozzle thing is useless. So I just open up the whole can, give it a little shake. You don't need a whole lot necessarily. I'm gonna do the top first. So I've just kind of applied a bit. Go about 1200 RPMs or so.
And that's about it. And then now we'll get the sides. Now the, the problem is with this, you might get some of this, it's, it's a white paste. And so, you know, there was a few kind of cracks in this wood. So that's one issue. You may get a little bit of that in there. I'm just gonna apply it on kind of the top of this thing rather than like all over it on the wood. And, and it's gonna kind of retain some of that in the wheel anyway. So we're just gonna kind of go with it like that. Mostly I'm pol I don't really need to polish the wood and I don't know that this car polish is really gonna make it a whole lot better than it already was. The wood is what I'm talking about. Mainly I just want to give a coat to the, the plastic part. The resin. Pretty good. Alright, so let's close that lid. Put this stuff away and I'll give you guys a shot of this thing. Without this light on. Let's get under let's get under a light here. That might make things a little bit nicer. I'm gonna kind of point you guys down oh, down a little bit. There we go. Pretty, pretty crystal clear, I'd say. So let me get a, I got a, um, what's it called? Got a, a microfiber. I like to wipe off my pieces with this microfiber towel real quick, and then we'll pop on the, the little stopper piece just to make sure there's no, nothing on there. And then let's see where the where did I put that stopper piece? There it is. Not too shabby considering this was a failure. Born from a failure. I'm happy with that. Definitely happy with that. All right, so let's switch to this view. So let me read your comments now. Let's see here. Uh, what's going on here? This seems weird. I think that my... Did my... The chat doesn't seem right over there. Let me let me look at my phone. Yeah, I don't something's weird with my with the chat thing on my screen. It's totally not up up it's not the right thing. So let me I got to look at my phone to read you guys' comments and then but, you know it's interesting like I said I the, the initial project with this obviously I really wanted to make that bowling ball but I mean you know I'm gonna get this was you know one let's see I have two of those cubes I've already made two lamps I have this um, two blanks went to well I haven't actually heard from the winner of the blanks yet in the giveaway guys and if he doesn't respond to me you like you know within a few days at this point i might have to like repick so so just be ready for that i might i may end up having to repick it and i will let you guys know if somebody else wins those blanks if i don't hear from him um, but anyway so you know somebody's gonna win two of those blanks and i still i'm looking over there and i have one two three four let me go let me just take a stroll down over here one two three four five six viable um blanks two of them if you saw the video i'm like eh, i don't know if i i don't know about them they, they have significant bubbles 
and like separation on the, the surface between the resin and the, and the wood. And so, you know, out of that whole thing, there's like, you know, just a, a very small amount that's that I'm kind of like, I don't think I want to mess with those. Um, but there's still lots of projects, especially if I cut all of them into bottle stopper blanks. Good Lord. I mean, there'd be a ton of them. So I hope that this kind of is, is continuing to show you guys that, you know, even if you have a failure of some sort um, or, or you can't get the project that you wanted done, it doesn't mean that you can't make something cool out of this stuff, you know, definitely. I can't read the, the chat because YouTube is, is way behind or something like that. Looks like 1995 to me, yeah. Yeah, you could probably sell it for good, at least a good 20 bucks. So, yeah, especially if you're looking at it from a money perspective, you know, because that was definitely not, uh, that was a lot of resin that I used. And so I don't know how much it would have been exactly because I didn't, I didn't pay for it. Illumilite sent that stuff to me. And that's why I felt even more horrible. Like it, it would have been one thing if I would have just blown this project, but I spent the money and obviously that would have hurt my pocketbook, but I'm the only person on, you know, that, that whatever. So I messed up. Uh, but then I'm like, oh man, Illumilite sent me free resin and I totally just wasted it. So we haven't wasted it, I, I don't think. And I'm excited about the, the Millennium Falcon. I think that that thing is going to turn out kind of cool, hopefully. So again, I'm not going to do a, a stream of me sanding that thing. It's just going to be hours of sanding and totally boring. Um, so I'll do kind of a video and explain, go through the steps of how I, I end up doing, uh, you know, sanding and polishing that cube. Um, probably just one video. There are two cubes. But yeah, so anyway... I hope you guys enjoyed watching that come together. I can't read the, ch it's so, usually I can talk and look at the chat and kind of answer questions and stuff. And it's just ridiculous. Uh, let's see here. I just gotta make sure I'm not missing anything. It doesn't look like I'm missing anything. Even this one might be actually slow. So uh, just a reminder on Friday, that's gonna be the patron first Friday hangout stream, uh, Q and A and, and demo. And uh, I'm going to be casting on that. So if you want to, if you're not a patron yet and you want to get access to the first Friday hangouts, um, I do a little demo. This time I'm going to cast some snake. It's not, it's not like snake skin, um, like what you typically would think. Um, it's like the shedding, the sheds of, of snakes. So it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but uh, Jerry Wagner and uh, Jim, I can't remember his last name, sent me two different ones. So that's what we're going to be casting for the demo. It's just going to be kind of a quick demo. And then the second half, <coughs> excuse me, the second half of those are like a just a Q&A hangout where I'm totally, the only thing I'm doing is reading the, the chat. And so for people that have like resin casting questions, it could be anything, but, but I kind of focus it on resin casting questions or if people are having some problem or, you know, want to learn more, listen to what I have to say about, you know, whatever with resin casting, that's half the show is dedicated to that. And so that's kind of the advantage for that, that the patron hangout, you get that. Um, but for everybody else, if you don't want to do that, um, I always take out the demo part and then like, like edit it down and then post it on, on YouTube a little bit later. So, um, anyway, for all the patrons, I will see you guys on Friday. That's going to start at 3 PM. Uh, and then, yeah, so I think that's about it. And then next week I got some really cool projects planned for next week. Um, some fun, different things. So, um, and that'll just be regular YouTube. So anyway, that's, that's what's happening guys. That's what's going on. Yeah, the chat's weird. I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening. But anyway, so since I can't figure out if we're, we're actually live with the chat or not, we should probably just wrap things up. So I will see you guys that are patrons on Friday. Um, for everybody else, I will see you guys next week and we'll do some more streaming. I'm not sure what exactly we're going to be doing with the schedule yet. I'll have to kind of see what's happening with my own schedule. Um, the big thing, so next Friday, definitely, we're going to be doing some resin casting. Uh, the question is, I'm not sure about Wednesday. So make sure be 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 watching, I guess, on, on Instagram and Facebook for uh, posts. And I'll let you guys know about the Wednesday stream. If I can come up with something to turn or or even doing some other resin casting stuff. Um, I'll let you guys know about that. So anyway, I hope you have a great rest of the evening. Uh, get out there, get, in, get into your shop, make something fun, do some resin casting, and I will see you guys all on the next stream.